It's 4 o'clock on a Monday, and you know what that means. It's time for another exciting episode of Taxi TV Live. Yeah! Baby! Baby, it's hot outside. Yeah! No, actually, it's hot outside. It's hot outside. Yeah! There we go. Um, hopefully my audio levels are better this week. I think I figured out the problem. And uh, I see the people in the chat room are all uh, all there. Let me say hi to you guys. Hello, Amanda, Mojo, Ken, Mary Ben, McGath, Musical Lucy, Jesse, Audio Painter. I saw Burpo in there somewhere. Had a really nice phone call with Burpo like, I don't know, a week or so ago. It's an enjoyable conversation, very nice man. And here's how hot it is where we are today. Look at that. 112 and we're talking 112 in the shade um whoo anyway mojo says he's getting hail hope it doesn't knock the corn down <laughs> oh man yes it is the hulk under that shirt you know i forgot i actually had that t-shirt and i was packing to go to a conference the other day and i saw that one and I packed it and people kept stopping me going, that's a great color green. So thank you, people. Um, so on today's show, we are going to listen because you guys asked for it last week. Uh, during the show, you guys kept going, hey, why don't you uh, do a, a show where you play the forwards and returns from the $150,000 uh, listing that we ran, I think for a soft drink, right? So, uh, here's what the listing said. Anthemic EDM instrumentals are needed by a publisher for $150,000. The creative fee will be split 50-50, in parentheses, TV commercial for a major soft drink brand. The commercial will air during the 2016 Summer Olympics. They're searching for up-tempo EDM instrumentals that you'd hear on playlists with artists like, but not limited to, Avicii, Zed, Cascade, etc., 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 Please listen to the following references to get into the stylistic ballpark of what they're looking for. Uh, and then, of course, the links to the references, followed by a quote from the source. They're looking for instrumentals with an EDM and anthem type of sound. Instrumentals should have an intro. Instrumentals should have an intro that builds the hype of the track and have strong, contagious dance style beats with an animated styled arrangement that makes people feel good and free. Woo! Free! Capturing that emotion that you hear in Levels by Avicii is what they're going after. Uh, end quote. Please submit well-crafted, upbeat, carefree, and fun instrumentals that really set the party on fire. Your instrumental should sound like a real deal EDM act, making use of all the latest production techniques like build-ups, risers, drops, current sounding synth leads, pads, etc., etc. Begin your instrumental with an intro that can serve as ground zero for your build, before releasing a trademark EDM riser that bursts into a huge anthemic style chorus that would make anyone listening want to throw their hands into the air. Woo! Um, submission should be two minutes long, uh, easy to edit uh, into shorter versions like a 30 or 60 with a with faded or button stinger ending. Um, I do want to mention, uh, I had somebody at the conference I was at over the weekend um, somebody confirmed for me uh, who's in the advertising world that they're just as happy um, getting, I see no activity. Is that possible? No activity in the chat room? Um, they're just as happy getting uh, instrumentals. Uh, <laughs> instrumentals, duh. Is getting fades as they are buttoned endings. Um, that, you know, generally speaking, they're using 30s, 30 seconds worth, and uh, they like to create their own endings sometimes, which I do remember from my days doing audio post on commercials. We did that a lot, but uh, I don't know. I, I personally would think they'd want buttoned endings, but apparently I'm wrong. I've been wrong before. Um, we don't know if a taxi member got this gig. Um, I'm sure that they sourced music from probably the top five or 10 music uh, advertising music companies in the United States but our members have beat them on an occasion or two. Um, there were 243 submissions on this. There were five forwards, um, not that many. And one of the forwards, somebody sent in a, an instrumental version and the version with the vocal in it. 
And the screener working on this was also the person that brought the listing in because this screener is very, very close to the person at the ad agency or the branding company, whichever it was. Um, so, and by the way, somebody with really good ears and somebody who's got a very long history in the industry and has been vice president of this and senior director of that. And uh, so he forwarded both versions, both the instrumental and the version with the vocal to his friend at the uh, ad agency so that he or she could hear them both. So there you go, 243 submissions, only five forwards on this one. Um, so shall we listen to some music? What do you say? And let's play the, uh, you know, let's second guess. Second, I'm not on it today. A little jet lag still. I flew home on a red eye Saturday night and I really haven't caught up on my sleep. Um, let's do the uh, voting where you vote plus one if you would forward it, minus one if you would not forward it. And let's see how close you guys get to what the screener did on this. And that's the first one. It's called Rise to the Extreme. Don't vote yet. Cast your votes, you guys. Plus one if you would forward that. Minus one if you would not forward that. I'm very curious. Uh-oh. Feel a sneeze coming on. <laughs> Sorry. Where's my paper towel? Can I hold it back? <laughs> mm. 
We need Polly. Polly, are you here? We need Polly to count. <laughs> or maybe Brio will count again. <laughs> Thanks, Giza. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's not for the Olympics. It's to run during the Olympics. Uh, okay. I think that's all the votes. Okay. <laughs> oh, your comments are funny today. All right. That one was, in fact, forwarded. And remember, this was the screener that brought the listing in who's close friends with the person. Uh, so, wow. 11 people said they would forward it. 18 people said they would not. And the screener who brought in the listing and is friends with the guy at the ad agency uh, forwarded it. Um, I saw some people saying, you know, it's good. It, it, it didn't have anything huge or groundbreaking or anything you know it sounds like the same old stuff i kind of think that's what they want i mean they don't want something that is so groundbreakingly different in style that it's going to attract your ear uh away from the voiceover or away from the dialogue in the spot then again who knows maybe it was a spot with just a bunch of people with their hands in the air doing whoop whoop see i do that a lot um i don't know I personally thought it was pretty good. It was, uh, it sounded good here. By the way, is the audio any better this week, you guys? Needs more dough, bro. <laughs> sounded like a Eurovision theme as each country walks on stage. That's pretty funny. Uh, Craig Robert or Robart says, I always strongly consider the references, so. Uh, sound too much like dynamite to me. Audio seems good, good to know. Yes, I figured out that the problem uh, when I was doing the remote, for some reason, ever since I switched to the new computer, um, Ustream is not using the audio coming from the uh, from my camera, it's using the audio coming from the laptop or the microphone in the laptop. So I brought the level on that up and all is good. Um, let's see, love Eurovision, less phasing in my speakers this week. That's because the microphone, I think the mic in my laptop is mono, so pretty hard to get phasing on that. Uh, and it's funny, uh, Ken says, I didn't hear much bass when the music played. I actually turned the bass up uh, here in Taxi World headquarters so that it just sounded a little bottom heavier. Yay, Polly's here. Hey, Polly, how are you, man? All right, so, excuse me, as I said, uh, you guys did not agree with the screener on that one. Interesting. Okay, moving on. Uh, let me see if I can find... Okay, this one is called Love Struck. Let's see how you like this. Here we go.
had to do the Lasco fade on that because I think at three minutes and 16 seconds we'd heard all the good stuff in there. So cast your votes. Plus one if that was a forward, plus, uh, minus one if you would not forward that. Let's see what the audience says. Oh, by the way, uh, hello, Curtis Perry. I saw a thing go by saying uh, from Curtis Perry saying he was new to the show. Welcome. It's a, a pretty fun group in the chat room, and hopefully you'll learn some good stuff on the show. We try. Um, <laughs> Polly says unanimous minus ones. I don't know. I see a couple plus ones in there. Um, and the minus ones would have it. The people who did not forward this, uh, you were in agreement with the screener on it. And my guess is it, it's a cool track. It's kind, kind of a little like um, an updated version of 8-bit video game uh, music. I, I kept thinking of eh, some game. Can't think of it. Anyway, um, it was a cool piece. It just didn't have enough uh, of that, woo, woo, you know, hands in the air kind of anthemic, uh, I feel free, party on vibe to it. It was just a little more straight ahead electronic, I think. Um, okay, moving on. Yep, Bria's numbers are 31 that would not forward it and two that would. Okay, damn near unanimous. All right, now we're moving on to feel the freedom. Let's see, are we gonna feel the freedom or are we not? Let's see. <laughs> Did I say 16-bit? I meant 8-bit. Jet lag, trust me. little part that they just brought in.
like that. Nice turn. votes. That feel the freedom, plus one if you would forward that, minus one if you would not. I've seen a bunch of people show up of late, so let me read the listing again. Anthemic EDM instrumentals are needed by a publisher for $150,000, splitting that with the publisher. Uh, TV commercial for a major soft drink brand. Commercial will air during the 2016 Summer Olympics. Searching for up-tempo EDM instrumentals that you'd hear on playlists with artists like, but not limited to, Avicii, Zed, Cascade, etc. Please listen to the following restaurant uh, restaurants <laughs> references to get the stylistic ballpark, and then, of course, it had links to those artists. Uh, quoting the source, and the source was somebody who's really good friends at the ad agency that happens to be a screener here, Taxi. They're looking for instrumentals with an EDM anthem type of sound. Instrumentals should have an intro that builds the hype of the track uh, and have strong, contagious dance style beats with an animated style arrangement that makes people feel good and free. Capturing that emotion that you hear in Levels by Avicii is what they're going after. Please submit well-crafted, upbeat, carefree, and fun EDM instrumentals that really set the party on fire. That, to me, is kind of operative right there. Set the party on fire. Your instrumental should sound like a real deal EDM act, making use of all the latest production techniques like build ups, risers, drops, current sounding synth leads, and pads. Uh, begin your instrumental with an intro that can serve as ground zero for your build before releasing a trademark EDM riser that bursts into a huge anthemic style chorus that would make anyone listening want to throw their hands in the air and go, woo! <laughs> I'm so not going out to any clubs tonight. Uh, <laughs> went on to say they're not looking for music that sounds like a jingle. They want something that sounds more like a record and a darn good one to boot. Okay. Uh, Bria says we had 34 people that would forward that one and nine that would not. And once again, you guys disagree with the screeners on this one. Screener, it was, remember, this was a screener that brought in the listing from one of his closest friends who is like VP of creative in that agency. Um, I love this track. Personally, I really, really like the track, but there was something, I remember at one point thinking, you know, if I were mixing a Coke commercial, which I'm guessing this could be Coke, we don't know for sure if it is or it isn't, but Back in the days when I did audio post pretty much every day of the week on big commercials, I probably wouldn't have picked this one. Of course, hard to say without the video in front of my face, but it doesn't have that party thing. What this, I made a note. I really like the melody on this a lot. And I, I wrote down that the music is refreshing. It does make you feel free and relaxed. And then I thought, you know, if I were like, a golden retriever with my head stuck out of the car window doing 60 miles an hour down a country road, this would be playing in the background because it, it did have a really good sense of freedom to it. But it didn't have the party component. Um, yeah, it wasn't hands in the air, you know? Uh, it, it was really good on so many levels. I love this piece. I would forward it personally for a lot of stuff and I'm sure this thing will get used for something sooner or later but it was just to, for my money missing that thing is it was almost relaxing and um, I can't think of the right word but you know something that does it did set you free which was mentioned um, I thought that was mentioned somewhere, the idiom, anthem type. It wasn't quite anthemic enough, you know? It was kind of missing the anthemic component, but it did have this sense of, ah, I'm free now, which is pretty hard to do, I think, with EDM. Um, contagious dance style beats with animated styled arrangement make, oh, uh, that makes people feel good and free. Well, it did do that. It made me feel good. It made me feel free. But 
it didn't sound sort of as maybe aggressive as some of the Avicii stuff. Although I'm not a world class expert on Avicii, I probably know his top three pieces. Um, oh yeah, now people are falling in line with him. Michael wishes out loud. <laughs> Totally agree with ML. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody told me, gosh, I don't know, a week or 10 days ago, somebody sent me an email, and it wasn't the nicest email I've ever gotten, um, saying something about I'm running a cult. And apparently I am, because whatever I think, you guys fall in line with. <laughs> uh, yeah, they want riot music. Yeah, you know, th this didn't have that, like, as the camera pulls back and you see 10,000 people on a dance floor all raising their hands and getting sprayed with foamy stuff. Um, not a Burning Man main stage track. Uh, I got to tell you guys, speaking of Burning Man, <laughs> I'm such a jerk. I was coming home on a red eye. Uh, from Wednesday of last week until Saturday night, I was at the Hawaii Songwriters Festival. They fly me out for that every year and I am a proud moderator of several of the panels there and I want to give them a shout out. They do a really good job. It's um, probably like 125, 150 attendees, um, a nice gaggle of industry people. And you know, I did make it out for two hours worth of golf. Um, normally when I go to this thing, I spend like four hours a day in my room working on taxi stuff and probably four or five hours a day either moderating panels or doing one-to-ones what have you so uh anyway uh i left a little early everybody else was going home on sunday but i wanted to get home sunday morning so i took a red eye red eye and uh i got on the plane and i was sitting next to a mom and her three or four year old daughter nice enough mom sweet little girl but the kid was really chatty and i thought man oh man i was either gonna work or sleep on this flight, one or the other, and I don't think I can do either with this kid. Uh, again, really cute, nice kid, not misbehaving at all. Um, so I saw an empty seat. The plane was pretty packed, but I did see, I think I was in row 11C, and I saw an empty seat in like 8D. So the other side of the aisle and up a, a few rows. So I asked a flight attendant, when we get to altitude, mind if I jump into that seat? Because I see that that's empty and the one in the middle was empty. I figured the mom and the kid could stretch out. Everybody's happy. So flight attendant said, sure, go there. So as soon as the, I heard the ding and the seatbelt sign was released, I jumped up. I went over, I threw my briefcase on the seat before anybody else got in there. I went back and got my uh, headphones and something else and I parked my butt in the seat. And in the other seat, in the window seat, was this probably 24, 25, 26 year old young man um, really skinny, really suntan, looked like he'd been living at, looked like he was off the cast, of, or from the cast of Survivor, you know what I mean? Um, there might have been a little, like, crud around his feet, which he didn't have any shoes on, which is kind of a turnoff if you got to sit next to somebody for five hours. Um, but the guy was so pissed off that I took that seat because he clearly had it in his head that he was going to go horizontal on all three seats for the rest of the flight. And the guy was like pounding on his trade table and stomping his feet, and making grunting noises and throwing a minor fit. So I thought that was pretty funny that I totally screwed up his plans, purely unintentional on my part. Um, and then I went back uh, to go to the restroom and I saw that the mom and the kid were all sprawled out in my former seat. So at least they got the benefit of me changing seats. Um, okay, enough of that story. More my speed. That's I'm going to join. Uh, Giza says I'm going to join your cult. Uh, okay, there you go. Um, so now we're moving on. Enough of the guy sitting next to me with his bare, dirty feet. Looked like he was from the cast of Survivor. And we are now going to listen to one called... This one's called Never Die.
All right, cast your votes. Plus one for a forward on that, minus one if you would not forward that. Um, and it is still 112 degrees outside right here in the studio. It's probably about 72, 73, and I'm loving that. I forgot, uh, somebody mentioned uh, what was the Burning Man connection. I totally blew the story at the end. The Burning Man connection was the kid in the seat uh, in my row, <clears throat> Mr. Dirty Feet, uh, was on his way to some music thing that I'd never heard of, and it was kind of like Burning Man. But he actually brought his own drum, you know, one of those like two inch deep, 14 inch wide drums, and they lit him on the plane with like a two and a half foot beater thing, about the size of a majorette's baton made out of wood. I mean, you could definitely crack somebody's skull open, and they let the kid on the plane with that. So there's Mr. Dirty Feet, peace, love, hippie dude, carrying a weapon onto the plane I was on. Um, all right, the votes are rolling in. <laughs> I love it. Ken DePotter's got a vote. I won't say, although you guys can probably see it by now, too, uh, what the hell he said. Uh, mine is one. He wouldn't forward it, but I'm guessing I'm wrong. Then go the other way, Ken. <laughs> um... <laughs> the cow. Oh, yeah, I forgot. There's the cow. Heard a great song from a taxi member uh, who was at the Hawaii thing. Um, a song called Cows. <laughs> I'm not into feet. No, I definitely do not have a foot fetish. Um, one of our members wrote a really funny um, song about cows. Excuse me. Okay, the votes are in. Bria has tallied them up. We have 34 who would forward it, 14 who would not. Um, <laughs> Ken said I would have guessed if I was wrong the other way, too. Um, that one was, in fact, a forward. It, I thought that it had a little bit of a strange arrangement going on, but there was definitely enough red meat, as I like to call it, um, in there to cut together 30 amazing seconds. I thought it had the spirit, you know, the, the throw the hands in the air, party, woohoo, spray the kids with a bunch of foam. Um, at Burning Man, with their dirty feet and their little drums <laughs> and that stuff they smoke. Sacred Cows is the name of my next band. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. I like that one. That was cool. Okay. Let's go to this one now. I know that there was one when I checked out just to make sure the audio is working today. There was one that had really low levels, and I don't remember which one it was. Let's find out. This one's called Generasis. Notice how I didn't touch the volume. And now it's coming up a little. Yes, the last one was a forward.
All right. Cast your votes. Plus one for a forward and minus one if you would not forward that. That one, again, was called Generousus. Be nice. We're all about being nice in my little cult here. <laughs> I had two people in like a 10 day period to tell me that uh, I'm running taxi like a cult. Uh, Asaf, if you got here at the beginning of the show, you would know this because I said it twice already, but I'll repeat it a third time for you. 243 submissions with five forwards and the person screening was the person who brought it in from one of his closest friends who is the like VP of creative or I think creative director at the ad agency, actually, which is usually like the top dog, if not the president or the chairman. Um, yep, five from 243. Have I ever done a show on defining hybrids? No. Um, I could play some that, you know. Sure, that's a good idea. Bria, would you put that on the list of Wow, this one got all minus ones. Um, that's okay, it's off. You're off the hook, dude. I, I don't know if you're a lady or a man. I forget. <laughs> well, it's off. You're off the hook. Um, anyway, uh, no, I've never done a show on hybrids, and, and we should do one of those. I like that idea. Thank you. So that one um, just felt like it's a right idea, you know, definitely trying to get the EDM thing going, but it sounded like there were a few ideas that were kind of plugged into spots and there was a lack of cohesiveness going on. So you were in agreement with the screener who did not forward that one. Um, let's see, where shall we go next? Okay, this one is called Snowflakes. sound from Get Down Boogie Oogie Oogie. Cast your votes. Plus one for a forward, minus one if you would not forward, and that one was called Snowflakes. Let's see how many do I have left? How much time? 445. I've got one, two, three, four more to go. Okay, I can do this. <laughs> this is not Bill Clinton. This is actually a uh, a little model of a famous stunt pilot named Art Shaw or Art Scholl, I believe, who used to fly a plane called a chipmunk. 
and this little model was in the uh, about a four foot airplane uh, remote control plane that a friend of mine crashed I picked up the head it was the only thing that survived the crash was Art's head so Art lives on my desk All right, this one, uh, you guys were in agreement, uh, not a forward. Um, oh, uh, Bria says, except for one person who gave us a plus one on that. All right. Well, you guys were correct because the screener didn't forward that one. And now we're going to listen to one that's called EDM 13. By the way, I want to tell you, I was moderating a panel where I had a bunch of music supervisors uh, on the panel Friday or Saturday, and one of them, if not two of them, reiterated. Um, they said, if I'm looking at a list of music, considering stuff uh, for a show, for a project, whatever, um, and if you've got something like, you know, mix number one in the title, they'll just skip it. Uh, I know that seems harsh, but I think that what they were trying to say is, look, if you're going to put mix number one or version two in your title, that they're assuming that you're not that professional. Therefore, the music isn't so good yet. To give you an idea, a friend of mine who was there, who's a music supervisor, who will be back at the Road Rally this year and it does amazing stuff on the stage at the Road Rally, um, said that he listened to a thousand songs the other day I want to say, I know this sounds unbelievable, but I know the guy and he ain't lying because he works that fast. He's intense. I think he said he listened to, a th considered, a thousand pieces of music in an hour. <laughs> I think that's what he said. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right about that. This is a guy that will listen to, you know, like the first three notes go, nope, I can already tell it's not going to work. Nope, can already tell it's not going to work. Nope, nope, nope. And he did this on stage at last year's road rally, and uh, he didn't listen to a thousand, but he showed everybody how fast he works. And not one person commented afterwards, like, he didn't listen too long. It's pretty obvious that the stuff, when he skipped it, wasn't going to work for the scene. So it's not that he's just looking for great music. He's looking for, will it work with the scene? Um... Okay, so anyway, uh, the reason I mention that is this track is called EDM 13. So this person could be hurting his or her chances based on a poorly chosen title. Just passing that along. Here we go. This is EDM 13. Yeah, same guy on that panel, no joke. I'm going to stop this and make a point. I'm going to go back to the second one that most people liked. Listen to, listen to the level on this. It's called Never Die. Okay, now listen to the level on this one. This was also brought up in that panel Friday or Saturday. Same thing that if the level's too low, it can affect their thinking.
dying to see what you guys say about this one. So cast your votes. A plus one if you would forward that. Minus one if you would not. Ship 10 says, I don't know. Come on, commit, damn it. Ooh, it's getting cooler out. It's down to 111. <laughs> wow. Smoking hot day. If the only thing wrong with a song is the level, why wouldn't a screener ask for it to be resubmitted as opposed to simply returning it? Sometimes they do. If there's a technical problem on occasion, they'll go to our head screener and say, there's a glitch in it or distortion or something. But you gotta remember the quantity of music that we listen to and the quantity of music that the industry people listen to. You know, you make a phone call, or you send an email to the person saying, hey, we're checking out your song. The levels weren't quite hot enough. Then it's a return phone call. Oh, really? Thanks for telling me. So how much more should I bring it up? I don't know. It was just too quiet. Let me get a hold of the screener and find out how low it was. Oh, look, the screener's not here today. The screener will be back on Wednesday. Uh, let me see if I can call the screener on his cell phone. No, the screener's not available. So you can see it turns into a whole big problematic thing. The industry moves much faster than that on a pretty frequent basis. So that's why a lot of times you just have to get it right on the first pass. But that was really, um, really low. Uh, Peter Rahill says plus 111, absolutely. Um, all right, uh, interesting. 11 people said that they would forward it and 28 said they would not. I'm frankly a little amazed that the screener forwarded it, but I think we all felt it. When it got into that middle section, all of a sudden it was like, wow, this is cool. Um, I think a lot of supervisors wouldn't have even gotten past the first 15 seconds the uh, when once they realized that it wasn't starting out quiet and then exploding with more level uh, it just stayed at that lower level i think a lot of people uh industry wise we wouldn't do it at taxi because we'd get murdered if we did that stuff but a lot of supervisors like my friend who was on stage over the weekend would have just said nah, next and uh yeah combined with the edm 13 title and the low level couple of strikes for somebody who is, uh, in my opinion, a pretty darn good composer and had some really interesting stuff. It took a while to get there, but the screener obviously listened all the way through and got there because the screener forwarded it and must have felt that this would work really well in the context of a uh, soda commercial. So there you go. Okay, what do we have? Next one is called Yellow and Green. Could be a Sprite commercial, Lemon Lime.
Uh, plus one for a forward, minus one if you would not. Um, and I noticed, I went back and was rereading the listing and noticed that I misspoke. I kept saying ad agency, it's a publisher that it was ultimately going to. So I misspoke about that. I could run for a political office. Um, I like the fact that our, our viewers are, are suggesting possible uses. Like, I wouldn't forward it, but could be used for that. It's good. You guys are thinking. And that counts a lot, you know? You, uh, as I mentioned in previous episodes, so much of getting it right is thinking about what kind of scene would this work in? What kind of mood would this music evoke from viewers? <laughs> Casey Case is not opwerful <laughs> enough. I know. I thought it was missing some operaful as well. <laughs> I think it's a type I want powerful, maybe. KCK uh, watching on your phone. Fat fingered that one, maybe. <laughs> yeah. If you give me $500, I would forward it. <laughs> That's not the way it works. All right, 50 people said they would not forward it. One said he or she would forward it. All right, um, how am I doing on time? It's 5 o'clock. I've only got two more to play. Cool. I'm going to finish early today, something I rarely do. Um, okay, this one is called Summer Fire Anthem. Let's have a listen. Plus one if you would forward that, minus one if you would not. And, and I forgot to mention the one before that. I forgot to mention that it was not forwarded, so you guys got it right. Oh my goodness, the phones are lighting up. It's probably people calling thing. You're running a cult over there. 
Um, the votes are pouring in. Polly's lagging some. Well, that's what you get for going to eat dinner with your family, Polly. <laughs> I thought of you, actually, on Friday night. Uh, they had a show at the event that I was at, and uh, the winning contestant, if you will, it was a, like a songwriter-performer contest, uh, the winner was an acoustic guitar, female vocal, with a uh, sax player uh, accompanying her. And the minute I saw the sax, Polly was the first thing that popped into my head. So there you go. You are now branded as sax man forever. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know where people get a cult. I, Look, when people, sometimes people will trash us online and other people who've been longtime members who've been successful will go on there and go, that's so not true what you're saying. You know, it's all hearsay. I've been a member for eight years and I've been successful because of Taxi, blah, blah, blah. And then people jump all over them and say, oh, you're probably getting paid by Taxi. You're an employee of Taxi. You're part of their cult. I don't get it. I don't know. People drive me nuts. Um... Amanda says, cult comments, I suspect many people are simply in awe of your ability to interact with your clients uh, and your accessible attitude to business. I enjoy it. What can I say? Uh, so 36 people said they would not forward it, and six people said they would not forward it. <laughs> Bria made a little typo there. She meant six people would forward it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, how the hell is taxi a cult when people, it's a group of great people trying to help each other out. I know, isn't it sad that we live in a world where, you know, if a company's actually working in your best interest and all the customers get to know each other, that somehow is defined in some people's brains as a cult. Um, anyway, and somebody, one of the cult people actually said something to the effect of, uh, you have to have a cult leader and you're it, Michael, you're the cult leader. It's like, I don't have any purple sneakers or Kool-Aid. Well, whatever. Um, what's, uh, somebody said, I can't remember if it was this one or the last one, too many motifs, and I circled that. I agreed. Uh, it was kind of all over the place. Um, I'd written something else down. Oh, somebody said, can we hear the vocal version of the one that got forwarded? Um, so, yes, I will get to that. I pulled that back out again. Um Okay. <laughs> I love the comments. I really do. Makes my day. Makes my whole week, actually, starting off the week with uh, hanging out with you guys in the chat room. I really enjoy it. Okay, this one is called Paramount. Let's have a listen. <laughs> And that last one was not forwarded.
Curious as can be to see what you guys vote for this one. Plus one if you would forward, minus one if you would not. Let's see what you guys think. Polly. <laughs> well, Polly, you weren't here for the whole thing. Of course you think I went uh, yesterday morning, Saturday or Saturday morning. I, I went out for six holes of golf. That was the only time that uh, myself and Marlon Hookman Bonds, uh, who's a hit songwriter uh, and has become a friend of mine, he, he was at the rally last year. He was on the songwriters panel. But anyway, Hookman and I decided we had to get out and play some golf, which we didn't do the previous year. So we went out. And do you know this golf course, which was really windy, like 40 mile an hour wind, so it was impossibly hard to play, but they had these things that are like giant skateboards and uh, you could either go out in a golf cart or you could use the skateboard things. And they were like, I don't know, six or seven feet long, like big old skateboards with knobby rubber tires on them. And you stand your golf bag up, it's latched onto this thing. So we saw a husband and wife out there on the course riding around in these things. It's pretty funny, just imagine like, you know, a almost dining room table size skateboard with a golf bag sticking up in the back. All right. Uh, do we have a total yet? Or are we still voting? Are we still voting? Here we go. 29 said they would forward. 15 said they would not. Um, and the screener forwarded this one. So there you have it. And I believe, I think this is the one that there was a vocal version that was also forwarded. So let me check something out. This is the vocal version. Makes more sense if the vocal in, right? It did say instrumental, and uh, my guess is the screener forwarded this because the screener's close with the publisher and wanted the publisher to hear it for something else.
we get the idea. So we all like the vocal version better on that. And my guess is that the uh, screener, um, who himself uh, is a publisher and has worked at some really, you know, five-star companies, um, is obviously very close to the publisher looking for the song for or looking for the instrumental for the commercial. Heard this and went, you know, he should probably hear this because that's just a guess and yes uh, the bacon thing i just held up that was for you jimmy uh i was walking through the corridors of the hotel and walked by a gift shop and they had that hanging in the w window either you like bacon or you're wrong and i thought of you and i took that shot just to play it on today's show <laughs> all right so that's it we're done um <laughs> Steve Tushed says, five years been watching Taxi TV and I still don't get the cowbell joke. Now, Bacon, what am I missing? Cowbell from the famous Saturday Night Live skit. Uh, oh, gosh, I can't think of the guy's name. But it was with uh, uh, the Reaper song by Blue Oyster Cult. And they were doing a, a parody of a studio session working on that. And, they, and uh, whoever the actor was kept going, more cowbell, more cowbell. So it became like a meme. You know, it's a thing. People are always talking about more cowbell. It actually came up on a panel I was doing. The bacon thing, I have no idea. That may be uh, Jim Carvalho's thing all by himself. Christopher Walken, good one. Yep, that's right. <laughs> all right, any uh, quick questions? Where's your 150K? That last one, by the way, the non-vocal version, as I mentioned, was forwarded. Um, and the vocal version. Uh, oddly enough, but you know, it happens. Um, so any questions before we call today or can we just end the show? <laughs> Dead silence, like crickets on the other side. All of a sudden I asked that question uh, and it's just like the chat room just died. I've got a fever and the cure is more cowbell. Yep, uh, I'll give it like 20 more seconds. Did they pick anything yet? I don't know. Frankly, um, they always, with commercials, it's like, you know, gotta have it by Tuesday. And then they end up uh, recutting the picture and then they put another piece of music in. I always say when, when it comes to music and commercials, never, ever, ever consider it a done deal until you've either cashed the check or seen the commercial on your television. Um, well, eventually, watch the Olympics because you'll probably see the spot. Every now and then I see something on TV that I know we ran a listing for and go, oh, man, you know, we should have gotten that one. Um, I got to tell you, I... I spoke to uh, Frank Palazzolo, who, who's becoming a, a pretty good friend of mine. Um, Palazzolo did a thing on stage last year at the rally where he was playing taxi member music that we had picked for a listing he ran for this road rally segment. And uh, it was for a hit TV show in the USA Network. I can never remember the name of. And he was really enamored with what we sent him. Anyway, he and I were talking about what he wants to do at the rally this year, what I want him to do at the rally this year. And we were coming up with some amazing ideas. I really, really have this gut feeling that this year's road rally is, well, it's the 20th one. I've got to make it special, but it's going to be really, really good. If you've not made it to the road rally before and you're thinking about it, uh, you know what? You still have like four and a half, five months. Start saving your money. Come to this year's road rally. Because if you like Taxi TV, the road rally is, can't even explain it. I'm at a loss for words, hard to believe. Um, Graceland was the show. Thank you, Mojo. Man, I wish I could keep like Mojo in my shirt pocket, if I had a shirt pocket, keep him in my pocket because he fills in all the blanks for me. And with that, I will bid you adieu. I have no idea what I'm doing on next week's show, although I just saw a post-it on my desk before I started this show. Let's see if I can find that post-it. Um, 
people wanted us to do a show on the Christmas instrumental listing. Uh, so maybe we'll do that next week. And then the week after that, we'll have a guest on the show. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, write it in your calendars if you haven't yet. November 3rd through the 6th, Taxi Road Rally. It's going to be awesome this year. And with that, I bid you a fond farewell until next week. Bye-bye from Los Angeles.